Today we're going to be comparing the DJI L1 LiDAR sensor in comparison to the brand new L2 LiDAR sensor and we're going to look at the differences between using these two sensors, their specifications, as well as their accuracy when it comes to surveying. Now the L1 has been out since 2020, making it almost four years old and while many people love and adore this L1, it did come with some issues regarding the IMU calibration as well as some accuracy issues when it comes to surveying. With the release of the L2, DJI claims to have a higher precision IMU with higher accuracy for mapping with the brand new L2. Now according to DJI, the L1 is capable of achieving 10 centimeters of accuracy when flown at 50 meters above ground level. Whereas the L2 they claim can do 5 centimeters at 150 meters above ground level. For my American viewers, that's 500 feet above ground level. That's higher than the FAA even allows us to fly. Now when it comes to data return, the L1 does have an impressive three returns, which means while the drone is flying, for every one pulse that comes out of the LiDAR sensor, we can get up to three returns, giving us three points for every point that is emitted. And this is really good for areas that are really forested because your points are not gonna get stuck at the top of the trees. You're actually going to be able to capture points on the terrain beneath all of those trees. Now, while three returns is great, the L2 can actually do five returns. Five returns means you're getting even more data on the ground, penetrating all the little spaces between the branches and ensuring that you're getting the most amount of data on the terrain. The L2 is capable of capturing 1.2 million points per second thanks to the increased size of the Livox LiDAR sensor in comparison to the 480,000 points that the L1 was capable of achieving. Earlier this year, I made a video where I used my electric scooter to survey this entire street. And so today I'm going to be using the DJI M350 along with the L1 and the L2 to survey the same street and compare those accuracies to our 43 checkpoints. So I'm gonna start by attaching the L1 LiDAR sensor. Here we go, power on the drone. Now something I did forget to mention is that when you turn on your M300 or 350 with the L1 attached, the IMU needs a warm up period. This typically takes two to three minutes, but the drone cannot move. Everything must stay static for the IMU to warm up and begin its initialization before we start to fly and it calibrates itself in the air. It's not a huge deal, just something you need to remember to do. All right, so I got the M300 controller here and this right here is the street that I want to map. So I'm just going to create a new job and just specify what part I want to map. Okay, that looks good to me. I'll say okay. So to identify the drone, the L1, I am going to be doing LiDAR mapping. For payload settings, here are the returns. There are single, dual, and triple. I'm gonna do a triple return just to maximize the amount of returns we can get with the L1. The maximum sampling rate is 160 kilohertz, so we'll just stick to that. We'll have repetitive scanning and RGB coloring for our point cloud. I'll go back. I'll say okay. Payload IMU warmed up. Okay, so our IMU has just warmed up. I'm gonna do a flying height of about 70 feet above ground level. And it looks like our speed, the max speed that we can do is 5.6 miles per hour. Everything else looks fine. Our RTK is connected and we are getting corrections through end trip. So yeah, everything looks good to me. I'll go ahead and save. And I'm gonna go ahead and say next. Upload our mission and we'll start flying. There goes the drone, and it's off. Arrived at start point. Starting task. So while the drone is flying, it's going to start by doing its calibration. So it's just flying back and forth to calibrate the IMU. And here we go, it looks like we're collecting data. Let's see. Oh, and there's the LiDAR point cloud coming in. Looks like intensity mode. You could do a side by side to see the data it's collecting along with what the camera sensor sees. Okay, looks like we are approaching another calibration point. So it's gonna go back and forth. All right, looks like we're back at it. It's nice that it's fall, so like a lot of these trees, the leaves have already fallen off. It makes it a lot easier to uh, see the terrain. Okay, we're halfway done with this mission. And you can see here a live preview of the point cloud being generated. That looks very, very nice. I'm not sure how to change this to RGB. I don't want to mess with it too much, but it's pretty cool. You can see the drone in progress as it's flying and generating that point cloud. Looks like we're doing another, yep, another quick calibration mid-flight. You can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's the M350 
doing its final calibration before landing. Welcome home, L1. Now, let's test the DJI L2 LiDAR sensor. Okay, I'm going to swap out this L1 and we'll pop in this new L2. And let's turn on the drone. All right, and on the M350 controller, we can see a live view of the L2 LiDAR sensor. I'm going to select the same mission that we flew with our L1, just to stay consistent. Of course, when we look at the sensor, it's telling us that this is not the right sensor. So I'm gonna switch over to L2. There we go, that's the right sensor. Under the payload settings, I'm going to change the return to Penta return, which is five returns. And the sampling rate here is actually 240 kilohertz in comparison to the L1, which was 160 kilohertz. Everything else I'm gonna keep the same. We'll go back. We have LiDAR mapping selected, and we'll stay consistent here roughly 70 feet above ground level. Now with the L2, we have the option to actually increase the speed up to 15 miles an hour, but DJI says that we are capable of capturing more data at a faster rate without compromising accuracy. Perhaps in the future we can test it, but I wanna to try to stay pretty consistent here with the data that we collect. Everything else is good, so I'll go back, and unlike the L1, we did not have to warm up the IMU. It's all set to go, and we can upload the mission and start flying. Okay, everything looks good here. We'll say next, upload flight mission, and we can start flying. Moving to start point. There he goes. Arrived at start point. Starting task. Shoots it right down. And just like before, we're going to do the IMU calibration. So it's gonna fly back and forth to ensure everything comes in accurately. Now with the L2, we have actually an upgraded 20 megapixel camera with a mechanical shutter. So we should be getting much cleaner images that we can actually use for photogrammetry if we wanted to. Here we go, the data is now being collected. Oh, I just figured out how to change it. So that shows us what elevations. Yeah, so this is a different visualization. I was trying to figure out how to do this with the L1 and I wasn't able to, I don't know, maybe I wasn't able to at all. This is something with the L2. I can also switch it to returns. Looks like here I can see how many returns I'm getting on each point. I'm not quite sure what this visualization is, but do a little side by side. You can see camera and LiDAR sensor together. Very nice. We've hit our next calibration point. Yep. I, I love the fact that I don't have to sit here and calibrate this every time. I remember using LiDAR on a drone back in like 2019 and we had to do like figure eights and all sorts of crazy stuff to get the IMU to work and stop in the middle of the flight. It was a mess. It was just, this is so much cleaner. Like. Great job, I love this DJI. And while the drone is flying, I wanna tell you guys about Geo Week 2024. Happening in Denver, Colorado on February 11th through the 13th, Geo Week is one of the largest geospatial conferences in America, showcasing technologies for industries like surveying and mapping, reality capture, robotics, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and so much more. This week is your last chance to get a discount on the early bird special, as well as using promo code RAMI100 to receive $100 off of your conference pass. If you're a student, you can use code RAMI100 to receive 50% off of your conference pass, as well as a free exhibit hall pass to any of the attendees. Check out the link in the description, and I will see all of you at GeoWeek 2024. Looks like we are starting our second flight line. Let's take a look at that 3D model like we did with the L1. Oh man, this is so cool. Yeah, very nice. You can see all the places that, you know, our overlap wasn't getting. Our second fly through is getting now, so very good there. And I can change the, oh, well, this is the altitude mode, reflectivity mode. Very good, very, very good. And this is looking good. We're nearing the end. Looks like we're still maintaining our RTK. Yeah, 42 satellites. Very nice, I love that. Okay, and we're gonna do our final calibration. Return to home. There we go. All right, now that we've finished collecting data with both of these sensors, let's head inside so that we can compare our results. 
All right, I've processed all of the data from the L1 and the L2 using DJI Terra. I'm gonna start by showing you the data set for the L1. As you can see, here is the RGB point cloud. Everything came in quite nicely. I can zoom in and out and see a lot of detail for the street. The thing that I love the most is I'm able to actually see beneath the trees and we can filter out all of the non-ground points. So there we go, we have a bare earth, uh, point cloud, which we can generate a DTM, a uh, digital terrain model, um, and then use that model to do additional survey work. Now, I do want to take a look at a profile view to see how much noise there is in the point cloud. So we'll do this over the street to see the difference in elevation. So I will do this, let's just say right here, we'll just take it in the middle of the street like this, okay? And here is a profile of the road. And if I take a look at the noise that we get from the point cloud on the L1, the lower elevation here is at 604.17 feet and a higher elevation is at 614.35. So we're looking at about two tenths of noise in this particular cross section. If I go towards the beginning of the site and we zoom into the road on a low point, we got 605.55 on a high point 605.64, so about one tenth. So with the L1, I'm seeing about one to two tenths right now. We'll do one more sample on the end of the road here, right before the turn. I'll take it right here. And on a low point, we've got 604.7, and on a high point, 604.9, so at two tenths again. So yeah, one to two tenths of noise. That is what you can expect with the L1. Honestly, I think that for more forested areas, areas where there aren't as many hard surfaces, one to two tenths is actually pretty acceptable. You may need some additional accuracy on areas like this, and that's where I might want to introduce some ground control points. Now we did add um, all of these checkpoints here. I've got actually 44 different checkpoints, and at the end of the video, I will go over the RMS error between the process data and those checkpoints for both the L1 and the L2. And the last thing I wanna show you in the L1 is the returns. As you can see, there are three returns using the L1, and three returns was quite good. It did get a lot of information that was missing, especially in areas where there was lots of tree coverage. So we were able to see underneath all these trees. It looks like the second return really picked up most of the data, but the third return was helpful. So. Uh, pretty nice, I like it. All right, let's take a look at the L2 data. And this is the L2 data. It does look very similar because it was pretty much flown at the same time um, on the same area, but this is the L2 right here. I'll go right into the returns since we just took a look at that and I'll turn off the uh, non-terrain points. And this has five returns. On a site like this, I see the fourth and fifth return being a little excessive. I didn't actually benefit too much from those. I think by the second and third return, most of those points were captured. So for a site like this, a small residential road, um, I think five returns might be overkill. So you could dial it back to two or three returns and I think it'll be just fine capturing a lot of data beneath the tree coverage. If we switch back to RGB, we can take a look at a profile and we'll start here on this end of the site. Let's say something like this. On a low point here, we got 605.51 and then we've got about 605.59. So you're talking eight hundredths of a foot, so just under a tenth. Uh, pretty similar to what we saw with the L1, maybe a little bit better, but that's pretty good. In the middle of the site, I would say, on the low end, we've got 604.50, and on the high end, we've got 604.63, so we're at 13 hundredths, about a tenth and a half. That's not bad, that's pretty good. One last check here on this end of the site. And on a low end, 604.66 and 604.77. So about a tenth again. So it looks like it's closer to a tenth rather than two tenths. So I do see slight improvement with the noise that we get out of the L2 versus the L1, which makes sense because the live box sensor is improved and we can see that affects the data and gives us less noise um, on our surfaces. And just like the L1, I've got the 44 checkpoints here. And so I'm gonna show you the quality report of both of these uh, data sets to see how accurate the point cloud is in the vertical axis. So this right here is the L1 data set. 
And we can see that because it says that the payload is the Senmuse L1. So it goes through all the different calibration parameters. Uh, but really what I'm most interested in is the point cloud checkpoint error. Now, none of these points were actually influencing the data set. They were just merely used to validate how accurate everything was by taking the differences between the coordinates that we observed with the GNSS receiver and what was taken from the point cloud. And overall, the root mean square error is about one tenth of a foot. There is a uh, bug inside of DJI Terra where all of the units are just meters, but I assure you these are feet, not meters. So yeah, no confusion here. This is not uh, 10 centimeters off. It is one tenth of a foot off, which is about three centimeters. And I can go through all of the individual points. Some of them are right on, and some of them are a little bit more than a tenth, but overall the RMS error did come back at one tenth. Now I'm going to load up the L2, and I think the results will shock you. This is the L2 mission, and as you can see, DJI Senmuse L2. And if we take a look at the RMS error here, you see we have, again, about one tenth. And so what I can conclude is that this is one experiment that I did. It was small, there was not a lot of terrain coverage, the surface was pretty flat, and well, I guess the L1 and the L2 are pretty comparable on a site like this. We definitely need to do more testing on more complicated terrain, but this was a good initial test to put both sensors head to head. If you'd like to see an example of a more rugged terrain, a project that I worked on where I actually used the L2 and pushed it to its limits flying hundreds of acres of land, then you're gonna wanna check out this video video right here. Thank you everybody for watching and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will see you all next time.